This is Cinema. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Rumblings. And today we are taking a look at Sabika, designed by Germain Mian and published by Ludo Nova. It plays one to four players in about 60 to 120 minutes. Which is also called known as two hours. Yes. One to two, one hours. two hours. We just, I Why want to tell you. Why make it easy? When you make it difficult, yes. Worse. When you make it difficult. I just wanted to show the audience that I know math. Yeah, yes. Bye! Welcome to another review on this YouTube channel. Board if, game. If you yes. board, it's board game review. It's not just a review. Yeah, we're not reviewing our own channel. Today we're going to review this channel. It's bad. 10 but, out of 10. Yeah. If you are new to the channel and you feel like this is something I want to see yes. more of, what do you what can do then? You can subscribe. It's a button down there. You can even click the bell to get notifications ding, ding, ding. when we post new videos like yeah. this. Like, yeah, you would not get the one for this one because you would already have oh, watched that's it. True. And it's already published. Yeah. So, but you will be getting published videos a lot of times because we're going to play many games and review Let's them. Let's talk game. Sabika, this is a game from the same designer, same, same designer who did Bitoku last year, oh, yeah. which was a game that we enjoyed. Many people loved it. For us, it was a good game. Yes. So we were excited to see Sabika, see his next design, see what he was coming up with. Yeah. And that is what we've done because we have played the game yes. just so you know it. Yeah. Let's first do a brief overview of the game. In this game, you are trying to build the Alhambra, I think. There's a theme somewhere here. I, I don't find it. There is a theme. You are uh, building a Alhambra by walking around in circles uh, and doing actions. There's a rondel. There's two rondels. There's three rondels in this game with different workers that you can move in those rondels. You will be basically what you do in your turn is to move a worker in the rondel, lay him or her down, depending on where you are in the circle, and doing the action that is there. You can build buildings, you can write poems on walls, like not graffiti, but actually what you did in the Alhambra. You can uh, make trade routes with different cities. You can do other things, but those are mostly the things you will do to get points. And the other things are basically getting resources, trading. Um, storage. Yeah, getting more yes. storage for your resources, activating things you already activated. And all of that. Yes. And all in all, you're going to try to move around and do these actions. And after five rounds, the player who got the most points are doing these things is going to be the winner of Sabika! Yay! This game is a table hog. It's so big. It looks really beautiful on the it's board. Very, very it, nice. Yeah, the board looks really nice. I think the artwork on the different buildings are, especially the small buildings with with the different gardens and towers and stuff. Yeah, looks nice. I think it generally looks like a it's Euro very game. Very good. Yeah, it looks, I enjoy it. Looks like pure Euro goodness. Yeah. I I get why it's so big because it's a lot of information. But it's big. And yeah, but they have done it so that most of the things that you have in the game fits on the board. You you could yeah. have like piles of it on the side of it, but they yeah. have um, have a lot on the board. I think that is a lot of information to take in, especially mm -hmm. the first time you play. Uh, you have these poems that you can write. Mm -hmm. The cards with the poems um, have both symbols and text. The font uh, type on these cards are not the wisest picked out. It's more thematic than it's readable. Uh, they should have picked a better font, mm. but when you uh, have played it a couple times or you have uh, seen the symbols, you don't need to read the text for it to make sense. But it takes a lot of space. We struggled with our big table to fit everything together in, in just a two-player game, so you have to have space for it. Yeah, it is, it's huge. It's a nine-fold board. Uh, it's not a full box size to nine times nine but it's but a it's bit smaller big. but it's a nine sign board so it's really big it's part of it i thought could have been a bit smaller yeah but then again like the rondel i don't think it could be a bit a lot smaller bit, but, but with four players if yeah. when you have you a lot of things to on see it where things are yeah, yeah it's gonna absolutely. be a problem uh, i think the quality of the components are really nice you have some stickers that you can put on them uh, i do not get them in the box no. oh you don't get no. them you don't need them the the colored um, wooden ones are fine the game also has a rule book as we have talked about before we enjoy games with rule books yes uh, it's a 24 page rule book it's uh, pretty long it has the same font some places and the background is kind of uh, beige which i like uh -huh. uh, but I, I feel like most of it is pretty straightforward it has that way of making the rules so that you have all of the different elements first which i don't like or like oh this is how this works this is how this works and then you learn the game yeah. it's not a way i enjoy learning the game and also 
it, for some reason, I can't explain why, because I haven't like analyzed the rulebook, it was kind of hard to find what I was looking for when I was having some questions like, okay, where would that be in the rulebook? I don't know, so I had to look like, could it be in this section? No, maybe this section? Oh yeah, there it was, in that sentence there. So it was kind of hard to find some of the things I was looking for during the game, but most of the game is pretty straightforward. Uh, not straightforward, but like easy to remember yes. when you get into it. There are kind of like a player aid on the uh, back here. There's kind of like some symbols and stuff, which yeah. is great. And there is a big player aid as well. There's only one, yeah. but it's a big one, which is as big, and not as big as the board, but oh, it's, yeah, it's always, it's also big. So it's not a problem. I would have liked there to be like, there's especially one action, the storehouse action, where you can do one of two things. Mm. And it's very easy to forget because the most logical thing would be to do the action there. And then there is like a secondary action you can choose, uh, not secondary, but ex ex instead yes. of doing the like normal thing you feel like you would do there. And that one is very easy to forget. So that kind of would have been nice to have a player rate with all the different actions and the order of what you do in them and how they work. Yeah. But it's not a big problem for me. Yeah, other than that, all of the costs for the actions are written on the on the board, which yeah. I really like. It's easier to forget if it doesn't say so. It's also some uh, symbols for final scoring mm -hmm. and also uh, end of round scoring. And also um, uh, it, there's some information on your player board as well. Mm -hmm. So I think like information wise, they've done a good job. Absolutely. We have played this game with two, three and four players. Uh, with two and three it has taken us about two hours and with four players it took us about three hours. I feel like the uh, the first time we played two players it was a learning game and it was yes. longer. So that's going to be shorter when you play more times with two players for sure. Yes. I felt like for me, as in most of the, like mostly in these kind of like games, three player was the sweet spot because you got there's a lot of interaction in the game. So you got, so you got that, but you also didn't get the three hour playtime mm. because three hours for me was was too long oh yeah i agree uh there is some real potential for ap moments in mm -hmm. this game so i feel like if you get it down with a group that doesn't have that much ap you yeah. can play it with four players with but with our group or me because i have a lot of ap uh, four pl players is too long yeah i think it was that, only you it was all the players yeah and i think uh yeah three players is good for the interaction but i think also that two player were fine but overall yeah. this game it, for us it should take shorter time than it has taken us yeah we're gonna talk more about the player count basically in the gameplay so let's yes. dive into that this game has three rondelles that was kind of like the uh, main selling point of the game like the unique selling point of the game three rondelles. Uh, the triple rondelle game and and I was thinking they would be more connected, but they're really not connected yeah. almost in any way. They're kind of connected in some ways because there's some uh, secondary actions you can do in between them. So if you land on this specific space in the middle ring, you can do it. And if you land on the uh, same space, same space, the same location on, on the outer ring, you can do that same action. So it kind of like has that interaction. And all of those secondary actions are, I was going to say better, but different the first time you a person take them the first round. They will get something other and the other people who do it will get a, a I will say kind of lesser but a, a different uh, bonus yeah. for mm -hmm. doing it um, other than that you're gonna have two in the outer ring one in the middle and one in the worker worker, worker yes yeah. yes not yes. just two one two two, two and one workers yes. and the uh, rondelles are very tight yeah this is a tight game yes. this is a game especially like resources are tight but the money is what is super tight. So tight. You can move two spaces for free. And if you want to move more, you're going to have to pay one for each space you move. So that's going to limit how far you move. And also if there's anybody where you move to, you have to pay a coin for each person who is there or yes, each people who is there. Yes, including yourself. Yeah. So it's going to be super, super tight and super expensive. So kind of the balance of doing actions to get more coins or doing actions to get points or resources is a very interesting balance for me the last game we played now i felt like i used half the game just doing like an action getting something and getting the money back that i used yeah. because <laughs> you always need to have money yeah that is very tight i think also that how how you um are in the uh, what do you call it player player order mm -hmm. player order uh, is interesting because because sometimes i see that the build action that i really want to 
do. Yeah. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. I want you to move. Yes. I want you to get out of here so I can do that action for not uh, infinite money because yeah. it's so expensive. And sometimes you you go to a strategy that, for example, focuses on the inner board or the middle board, but you only have one worker for that those mm. actions. So sometimes you want to uh, get some other bonus action in some other means to you really utilize or maximize that strategy. It's really interesting. Yeah, what I wanted to say uh, before we dive into like the bonus action yes. stuff is like the rondel itself is very interesting because of the timing. Yes. Like this is what makes it interesting that it is three parts mm. because you can then, okay, I hope somebody's going to move in this and yes. I can do my middle move now, even though that might be not as good in, in the order, mm. but it's going to be less expensive and then hope that somebody moves around. So I can go in there and snatch it. Sometimes you can see because you can only move clockwise, yeah. you can see that, oh, everybody has to move past that. It's going to be very long for them to move to the place I want to do. And I can basically wait, wait. a bit doing that yes. and hope that nobody's going to be like, oh, I'm going to pay four months to move then you'll be like no and, and, and all of that timing is what makes it very interesting and it's what makes it very interesting with more people yes with less people you're gonna have some dummy workers some gold people standing around basically like statues they're just gonna stay there yeah. and do nothing and be uh, annoying and, they're gonna and then move. you go to the space in the Alhambra city and you'll be like, oh no, there's a statue here already. I have to pay money for it. <laughs> yeah. And then they're going to move one space so you know where they're going to be. Yeah. And, and that's like the tree player, you have some of them, but you have more living people actually moving things around and making the timing and all that more interesting. I felt like in true players it was way easier to plan. Yeah, which made it less interesting. Yeah. Uh, like to be like you have almost perfect information, not completely, but you know it's only going to be like one more coin. Yeah. But in a four player game or a three player game, it can be way many more differences changing happening. And this is like the interaction on the rondelle is for me maybe the most interesting part of the game. I agree. It will not happen in a two player game that you have a lot of people on the same um, action space because mm -hmm. the gold people are moving, uh, they're not on the same space. Yeah. So it will not be like an action that is crazy expensive as it might happen in, for example, a four player game, yeah. especially. Um, but you also, um, sometimes when you take in a weaker action, it might be actually more expensive than in a four player game, for example. Yeah. Because the gold person is just there. It yeah. doesn't matter what action it is. That's yeah. True. And there is kind of three different strategies. There's more like strategies doing like a little bit of here and there. There's three different main points to get yes. main ways to get points. You can build the or four ways basically. Yeah. You can build the small buildings, you can yes. build the big buildings, you can uh, write the poems and you can do travel on the river. You will probably do a bit of everything. You can ignore something with no problem in this game, I feel like. Uh, I think you could play strategies ignoring all of them. Not all of them, but like one At of the them. At the same time. Uh, yeah, do nothing in the game. Just get resources and get zero points. Um, the poems gives you, there's two different kinds. There's a third one, the gray, which gives you the end of game scoring. Yes. But then you have the red and blue. The, the blue is an ongoing ability and the red is a instant ability. You can then use a action with the uh, poem uh, writer to a trigger and instant ability again, which is kind of uh, amazing. And I feel like all of these powers are pretty powerful. I agree. Like these are powers that feels pretty good. Yeah. They're not game breaking. No. It's not like, oh, you got that and I didn't get in to get one, then I'm going to lose. Mm. But they are pretty strong bonuses and pretty strong abilities. And uh, that for that, uh, some of them really changes out how you play. I, for example, had one that made it so that when every time I build something with wood, mm. I would get bonuses for that. And and that would uh, make wood, make <laughs> me always want to have more wood available so I could yes. spend wood when building. Absolutely. And I think also the, the gray ones that you usually buy towards the end of the game, sometimes you buy it early also to secure it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, those are expensive, but they can potentially net you a lot of points. So if even if you're not writing a lot of points throughout the game, mm -hmm. it might be worth to put in that extra money to get those points at the end of the game. I just have to to talk about it here because um, so we don't forget about it and that is the way you pay for things in the game yes. which I think is a super yeah. clever thing and I really enjoy it is that for example let's take a big building to build a big building you need to pay a gypsum that I think is a kind of rock I yeah. don't know probably somebody have already answered in the comments uh -huh. that's how it works as I realize I'm having these YouTube videos if there's something I don't 
want to Google, I can just say it in the video. I'm easy to Google. Uh, but if you need to pay a gypsum, and then you can, if you want to, pay two more resources, which has to be different from the gypsum and different to each other. And, and then depending on the resources you paid, you're going to get points. Yes. The gypsum is only worth one point, and the wood is worth two. The um, uh, marble is worth three points, and the ceramic, the ceramic glass. glass is worth four points. So that is hard to get, but you're going to get more points by using it. But you don't need to. So you could do like a strategy by trying to spam the building of big buildings, only getting few points by getting the bonuses of them and getting more of them. Yeah. Or you can try to get more resources and get more points for building things. And I really enjoy that part. Like yeah, the I agree. choosing or basically, oh, do I want to spend my resource now or do I want to get it later? Do I wait to build? Do I get more resources or get more points out of it? Or do I get that one point and be able to do that ability right now? Yeah. That is something I, I, I really enjoy in this game. I've seen it similarly in other games, but I yeah. can't remember which games. But I, I'm, that is something, I, uh, that mechanism, I, I, I think that like the Ronda is cool and that mechanism is also my second favorite part of the game. I agree, it seems really fresh and it seems also like you can yeah, go different directions mm -hmm. with it within like your main strategy. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the resources are really hard to come by. It's nice that you still get to progress in the game but it nets you fewer points. And it's uh, that kind of system with all three things that you do like both uh, writing poems, the big buildings and the small buildings. Yeah, because that's what we, where we were going. So nice yes. transition. Uh, because we talked about the poems. Those are nice. The uh, moving on the river is basically training uh, with... Uh, well, I don't think it's a river. No, no, but it's, it's uh, a few ocean. different cities. Yes. Just, it's not Trade like moving works. in a river. You are tra trading with different cities. Yes. You have to pay money, which is tight, uh, depending on how far away you want to move from the shortest way, basically, from another boat that you already have on a city. And then you will have to pay goods. So you get these raw materials on the board. You will then need to process them to be goods and you will then use the goods uh, to pay to a city. You can pay them a good they don't want and you will get a point and a paria point but if you pay them a good they do want you will get doubling of that uh, and also that's going to give you an instant bonus and if you do a consolidate action where you kind of like makes it uh, so that you're going to have a very good trade with that city you're going to move the boat to the other side of the location which might give you income every round or if it's a red city it's going to give you an instant action which is going to be one of the other actions in the game yeah uh, and then you have the small and the big buildings. Yes, the smaller buildings are um, things that you want to match. So if I buy a building, you have like uh, two colors on each side of the building mm -hmm. and you, you want to match them together with another building that you have from before. Yeah. And if you match the colors, you will get to do a, an action basically or get some resources, you will get a bonus. I really feel like you don't want to build these buildings without getting these bonuses. No, because then you just get put. Yes. Uh, and getting something in return from the actions that you do is really important in this game. Yeah. It's very, very tight. So uh, standing left with nothing, uh, it's, yeah. it's not hard to get uh, money or resources, but it's hard to not spend all of your actions on it. And, and then be you, lost yeah, with all yes, that. Yes, absolutely. As you, you basically briefly touched on bonus actions. Yes. Because every, all of these games that are super tight are important to get something back. Yeah. If it's more resources back, if it's the bonus action, yes. so you can do that and maybe then get some resources back. Like to get that economy flowing, it's, it's super, super uh, important. And the big buildings uh, have uh, like a double kind of bonus to mm -hmm. them. You have uh, a, a, a market of buildings that have uh, sometimes points sometimes money sometimes barrier points but it also can give you a special like to do an action basically yeah uh, and uh, in addition to that you will advance on the favor track which mm -hmm. also gets you better and better bo bo bonuses depending on how much favor that you have so uh, i felt like that was really powerful mm -hmm. but you have to balance between getting a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and less points for it as we yeah. talked about and get fewer things but get a lot of points i felt so far the um the big building seems better yeah um, that is my impression of it too but because you get kind of like a, a double bonus depending yeah. of course on the big building some of them don't have a best bonus, like they just give you a couple of resources, but some of them give you a, another action. So if you can build that bonus or that uh, big building that gives you an action, or you can build a small building that gives you that action, mm -hmm. the big building is going to be better because you also get to move on the favorite track. Yes. The kind of way they balanced it is that you need to use gypsum, which is the worst resource. 
to, mm. to actually build it. Yes. So that's kind of like the way they have balanced that out. The last thing we haven't talked about is the storehouses. On your board, your player board, you're going to have at the beginning of the game room for only four resources. And uh, the raw material you have somewhere else, but when they turn into a good, you have to have them in the storehouse. So you only have room for one in each of the four storehouses you can get or you have. And then you can upgrade them, which gives you uh, abilities or like bonuses, but also gives you more room. And that's kind of like I have played the game. Uh, the first time we played, I think I only upgraded one of them once. Mm. So I had like this with the two players, I think it's easier. Because you can easily do the things you want to yeah. in the order you want to. But when you play more players, you need to be able to hold that. But sometimes like, oh, I can move here now and get resources. Oh, I only have room for one resource. That mm -hmm. is horrible. Uh, and it's kind of that is also another thing that makes it tight. I really enjoy that mechanism of upgrading those and, and, and deciding how much space do I need. Yeah. Uh, and that is another thing I really like about it. Let's talk about the weight and who the game is for. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is on the medium side of heavy for me. The heavy it's, side of medium? No, the medium side of heavy. So you I think, think so? It, it's, okay. If it's like medium and heavy, I think it's a little more on the heavy side okay. than it is on the medium side. It's uh, like be because it's so tight mm -hmm. on resources, but also because it's so many possible things to go for and so many combinations. I think that this is a game with many moving pieces, many rules to have in your head yeah. and yeah, just a lot of stuff. So I think this is, yeah, um, one of the heavier games that we played after Spiel. Yeah, I agree. I, I felt for me that the most of it is pretty straightforward. The rules wise, uh, for me, I just felt like the, uh, the planning and all that is hard in this game and, and getting to do what you want. For me, it's like a, a heavy medium game. I, yeah, so and that's kind of, that's just like, meh. yeah. I think that this is a game for people who like Euro games and people who like interaction, people who like uh, tight games where you don't get to do whatever you want to do. And if somebody moves somewhere before you and you did the wrong timing, it's going to be hard for you to get to do the things you want if you don't want to spend all your money on it. That is something you need to be enjoying in this game. Yeah. I feel like it's not going to be a four player game. Uh, you have to enjoy a longer game. It's yeah. uh, I felt like two hours of three players was pretty nice. Three hours is way too long. Yeah. Uh, so if you can get it to 90 mm, or 105, like one hour, 45 minutes with three players, I think that's really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, and you could do that if you play with people who don't have a lot of AP and yes. you play with people who, uh, who plan their turns before they there is their turn. You can't always do that, but it's important to do in this kind of games. So I feel like it's if you are into medium heavy, heavy Euro games and, and want to play something that has quite a bit of interaction, I would say, especially yeah. with all of that movement on the rondelle, that's who's it for, for me. Yes, I agree. I think that if you know that you have a, an AP problem in your group, this yeah. might be too draggy and long for you. But that's really um, the case with almost all yes, games, if you have Yes, but I felt like this could potentially take a long time because there are so many things to consider. I think it's because there's also so many different like information or the yes, cards and all of absolutely. that. It's, it's a lot of things. Yes. So final thoughts? Yeah. I think this was a fun game. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the main issues that I have with it is that it might drag and be a little too long. Yeah. I like the interaction so much with yeah. four players. I really wish that it could be tightened down in time. And it's so, good if you play with the same group. Yes, absolutely. Because like having those a real living, no, no, it's still wooden, but they Fake move around yeah. by the help with a uh, hand. Um, instead, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. I was just like not misinformation on the internet but uh, having those to interact with instead of the golden static pieces mm -hmm. i think that gave a lot to the game yeah. i think it's still a solid game with two and yeah. i think it's um, might be best with three yeah. uh, but i don't think that the interaction on the wheel makes up for the very long time that it could potentially be uh, for four players to play this mm -hmm. game i think it's a great game i'm going to give it a six sorry an eight <laughs> 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 Sorry. It's my, a great game. I'm going to give it a six. Yeah, eight. My, yeah, my brain just said the wrong number. Uh, that, that, that might be like moment of the year for me. Uh, <laughs> it's a great game. Two. That's like you are the harshest rater of the interwebs. I don't know why my brain gave me the number six, but it's an eight. I enjoy so many <laughs> things about this game. I think the three player game is the best. I think if you can, uh, basically, I agree with everything you said. Yeah, like yeah. if you can get the four player down. Uh, but the, all of the elements we talked about that are really nice. I felt like 
Bitoku was a, a, a good game. This is a great game and hopefully he will just climb the ladder and makes even better games. It's an 8 for me as well. Cool. So that is the end of the video. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, you can do so now. Bye. Clicking subscribe button is fun and it's free and makes us happy like this. If you want to do that something that's not free, you can. Go to patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and support us there. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Sarah. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings and bye bye.